Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over the delay command. I already have the Nexion display built up. I'm not going to do it on a real display. I'm going to do it on in the debug window. I have three number fields over here. I have a single number field over here with a button, a dual state button, and then just a logo. And then down here, I have three timers, and they're all set to different intervals. And each timer is going to be tied to one of these number fields up here. The first timer will increment the number field every 500 milliseconds. The second one will be every second. And then the third one will be every 1500 milliseconds. I'm mainly doing this just to show you what happens when we interject a delay. Whenever we press this button field on the release, it's going to have a three second delay. And it's also going to increment this N3 timer. This button down here, we're going to use to turn on and off the timer zero. And that'll come up here in a little bit. So as you can see, we're going to count up over here. Whenever we press this button, we're going to delay for three seconds. I'll show it to you in the debug. And you can see it's counting up. This is every half second, this is every second, and this is every 1500 milliseconds. Now when I hit this button over here, we're going to have that three second delay. And you'll see these will stop counting. And during that three seconds, you might expect that this will, that the timers will run in the background but not display, but they don't do that. So you can see that this is on 29 seconds, or when I press it, 32 seconds. So after three seconds, it should be 35, but it's 34. And up here, 73 seconds should actually be six more, but it doesn't, it isn't six more. When we run this delay function, nothing else happens. So it just sits in that delay. The timers don't continue to count. The whole processor freezes. I'm gonna make a change to this first timer here. I'm going to add a delay of five seconds. So whenever this timer goes, it will, it will delay for five seconds, even though I have it set to trigger every 500 milliseconds. I'm going to disable the timer for now. And I'm going to have this dual state button started in a disabled state. So that way, when I start the debug window, it won't have that delay initially. And you can see these two are counting up and this one is not. So now when I start this timer, you'll see that these will stop counting. And every five seconds, they'll go up by one. So even though these two timers are set higher than five seconds, they're essentially five second timers because while the delay is happening, nothing else is happening. And so the timers stop to function. But I want to show you that it's not the delay command itself. It's the fact that it's running code that causes it to not run. On the Nexion display, you can only run one function or one process at a time. So we're going to comment out this delay line, and we're going to add this counter. So when this timer expires, it's going to look at N3. And if N3 is less than 120,000, it's going to increment. So it will, it'll keep counting until it hits to that, and then it will, it will stop. Now, in order to make sure we always start at zero, I do have to add a line. So we want to make sure we start at zero. And you'll notice now there is no delay. We're just running a code. I forgot I had a semicolon. I still do that every once in a while. OK, so you can see that these are counting. When I start the timer, you can see that these have stopped, even though there's no delay. It's because it was counting to that high of a value. And then it went once and it stopped again. Now I'm going to stop the timer. And 
And you could see, even though I clicked on it, even that didn't happen until the timer had stopped counting to 120,000. So the delay command does stop any other function from happening, but that's just because the delay is part of code and continues to run, just like in this when we did this count. So as long as this was counting, the timers couldn't execute because the next one only runs one process at a time. So once we started this process, the rest of them aren't happening. Now this video was a fairly quick video and it explained a fairly basic feature, but it's been a long time since I made a video and I thought, well, this would be an easy way to get started again. I'm hoping to start making videos starting the first of the year a little more consistently. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.